How, how did the connection with Barstool come about? When, when, when did Barstool come in the mix? Were they there in the very beginning? When, when no, it off? went down in the DMs, bro. So we that's had, where it always goes that's down. That's went down in the DMs. <laughs> uh, we had, okay, at that point, we had about 10 episodes out because they hit us up in August. And throughout OTAs, it was, just, it was the same thing that I was talking about on playing myself out of the league or not. I knew we were doing pods. So the whole goal in, in April and May, maybe, were to get pods to fill us up until football season. Because then when football season's here, we're going to play football. Yeah. We're going to step out we're of the pods. podcasting. Yeah. And so we're trying to like backlog episodes. I, we did as much as... I'll get to that later. Um, and we're backlogging episodes... And within our first 10, we had on some solid guests. I mean, Rich Froning, Delaney Walker. Delaney Walker out of the gate. There were yeah. articles written about. Mm -hmm. Pro Football Talk wrote about how Delaney Walker says Team IV almost killed him during a game. <laughs> because he's telling a yeah. story about how a saline IV fucked him up during one of the games at like halftime. He's like, man, I thought I was about to die yeah. type of thing. And so that's an article. It's always good getting the headlines. Yeah, <laughs> great for us to get the headline. However, when you're not really removed from the Titans yet and oh, Rabel is fucking at the cloud <laughs> over your head, you know, I still felt like I was a Titan. Like I still right now feel like Vrabe could be around here. <laughs> but uh, Vrabe has a team meeting the next day with the boys because Taylor leaves and tells me right away. And he's like, Vrabel brought up our stuff. He's like, guys, I love that you're doing the podcast. I hope all you guys do something off the field mm -hmm. as, you know, as long as it's not a distraction to this team. And he's like, here's a headline. He goes, guys, I promise you, no matter what is being said, anybody can take a little snippet of whatever you say and make an article out of it and then misconstrue the story and everything else. He's like, I love that you're doing it. You just got to be careful. So from there, our asshole's a little bit tight about it. But Vrabel comes on. <laughs> Vrabel comes That's on right. the podcast, yeah, yeah. says he'd cut his dick off for a Super Bowl. <laughs> and we that goes viral for us. That's yeah. going nuts for us, man. And, and you know how it is too. It's like when a clip goes viral, you're, you're almost like, "Fuck yeah!" I guess that yeah. I guess that makes sense now. But yeah. in the, when it's happening, you're like, uh, you know, you're kind of sitting there like, "Fucking brave!" Just you're thinking about yeah. his wife listening to this. Yeah. Show. You're not <laughs> yeah. thinking yeah. about how this is going to go yeah. around the world. Yeah. And um, that goes viral for us. We have Jalen Ramsey on. Jalen talks about how he used to shit talk uh, receivers in college. He's like, I stopped in the NFL just because, you know, guys have real families and <laughs> kids and wives. They're not girlfriends anymore. But we had Jalen on, and that was a really good pod. And uh, that one went a little viral for us. And then in August, Barstool DMs our Twitter account and asked if we'd be interested in having a conversation. And uh, of course we said yes. Is it like the Barstool main account? Like who, who's DMing you? I don't even know. Because Matt Neely was running it at the time. Got it. And uh, he hits me up and he's like, dude, I was like, what's up, bro? And he's like, uh, Barstool just fucking DM'd us and asked if we wanted to have a conversation. And I was like, no shit. He's like, yeah, what do you want me to say? I was like, well, obviously we got to say, yeah, but should we like wait a day? Should we wait a couple days? Make him think like, you know, we're tough to get. Um, we tell them, yes, we get on a phone call. I would say the next day, maybe. Mm -hmm. they, they operated fast about it. And uh, we get on the call the next day. I I know Barstool Sports. You got Dave Portnoy, Big Cat. You know all those yeah. boys. I'd followed them. And, uh, but I didn't know Erica was like the CEO mm -hmm. of Barstool Sports. And so we get on the call the next day with Gaz. Gaz and Erica. I thought that he said Eric. I said, Eric, what's up, boss? How you doing? Uh, yada, yada. And she's like, well, <laughs> I'm a girl, but, you know, I'm for the boys, so it's all good. I was like, oh, my gosh, I'm so sorry. I was like, I'm fucking sitting here watching my, uh, I'm sitting here watching my aquarium on the TV, just fucking nervous as hell to talk to you guys. I just fucked it up with the Call CEO. Call the CEO, Eric. Yeah, I called the CEO, Eric. Off a good start. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, they, they, were, they were wondering if we'd be interested in a partnership, and they didn't really talk anything uh, contractually. They didn't talk numbers. They didn't talk any of that stuff. Uh, Erica got on the phone. And they just talked about how they loved our tone, loved our chemistry, mm -hmm. loved everything we had. What they would look to do is pour gasoline on on whatever fire we wanted to start. And uh, just think about it as we would be your infrastructure and help wherever you needed, your resources. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was just the first conversation. They're like, if you want to know how serious we are, we'll, we'll, we can get a flight on the books. We'll fly to you guys, yada, yada, yada. And uh, so, obviously, fired the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. Get off the phone. And you're like, <laughs> 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 you 
you played it cool in the call. Yeah, though. You're yeah, like, yeah. Oh, yeah, let me yeah. think about it a little bit. No doubt. Like, obviously, I got to talk to Taylor. <laughs> Taylor's in training camp. And, uh, you know, there was a pod I had the next week. We get them in the books. And they're coming out, like, mid-August. So, and my, again, here's my whole play with football. So during OTAs when we were backlogging the episodes, because now here, here's, some, here's some more that goes into this story about how we get to meeting and sitting down with Barstool. So the whole game with football for me at the time was, all right, I've already decided I'm not going to be a 90-man guy. Mm-hmm. The injury rate in the NFL in football is 100%. Somebody's going to need some fucking gritty mercenary linebacker at some point to fill their depth and do yeah. a, give a punt set or two. And um, so I was like, I'm betting on that resume. Just somebody wanting to bring me in, be like, oh, he'll be able to, he'll be able to learn your pay- playbook quick, and he's a, he can be a teams guy. So I didn't do OTAs. I turned down probably four or five workouts or tryouts or whatever, and then we get to training camp. Right before day one of training camp, so it was the Saints, I'll say it was the Saints, Jaguars, maybe Eagles. I can't remember. There were a few teams that wanted to hit me up to see if I was interested in you know, coming and mm. doing a workout. All goes well. We'll sign to the 90-man roster. My thought at the time was, okay, I don't want to do training camp. Yeah. So I miss OTAs. We're <laughs> catching a little bit of a wave with busting with the boys. I'm finding a fulfillment and a joy and a passion that's sparking in me that I hadn't had since I was fucking climbing the ranks in football. Mm-hmm. Just like the whole journey with football. And like I'm fired up. I can't wait to get the first sponsor. Like I'm trying to figure out how it works. I'm researching on the internet. I'm listening to podcasts. I'm listening to any beef that's ever been had out there over a podcast personality and the company yeah. because they're teaching you about intellectual property and everything else, how ad reads work, all that shit. And um, so the time comes for Taylor's in training camp. I'm trying to wait it out as long as possible. If I can finesse all fucking training camp, perfect case scenario yeah. is don't play any games <laughs> and get signed before week one happens. Yeah. I get to be on week one. <laughs> and then as a vested veteran, you're guaranteed that entire, entire contract, whether or not you get cut. Yeah. So what I mean by that is you can go down week one and I can look like shit and they're like, oh, well, we're going to fucking cut you. Now, obviously, <laughs> I'm not like, I'm not thinking of it like that. But like, you can play week one and then cut you, but they still owe you the rest of the year's salary. That's only if you're on the roster by week one. If you're in the middle of the year, they can cut you and then they, then you just get whatever yeah. you played for. So that's my perfect case scenario. And so I'm staying in shape. I'm working out every day. I'm doing all this stuff. Barstool wants to fly in. Barstool flies in. That day, we have a podcast with Sean Johnson and Andrew East. And um, we have a pod. I want to say C.J. Mosley or who was the line? Avery Williams might have tore his knee for the New York Jets. Mm-hmm. New York Jets call me within a couple hours. Call my agent. I see that he tears his ACL. I was like, man, I wonder if my agent's going to hit me up. And I was like, I don't want to fucking go to play for the Jets. <laughs> like, they suck, dude. <laughs> um, and so my agent calls. And I pick up because uh, the whole the Jets thing. And um, he's like, hey, what do you think about the Jets? I was like, man, I'm going to be honest. I don't want to f- go to New York. I don't want to play for the Jets. Like, I'd rather go. If I'm going to do what I'm doing, I want to go and try and, like, have an opportunity to be on a good team. Yeah. And so that phone call was quick. We get another one. But it goes to voicemail because I'm in the middle of this interview with Sean Johnson and Andrew East. Mm-hmm. He calls. This was the Saints' third time calling to get me to training camp. They had now... The Saints just had their second preseason game. They have three guys that are injured. They're starting Mike Backer. They're starting captain and special teams demon, Craig Robinson. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, who was the other one? There's one more guy down. And um, they obviously needed, not only did they need bodies, but depending on how bad Alex Anzalone's shoulder was, yeah. that was a starting Mike Backer. Yeah. He was out the first couple of weeks of the regular season. So when they called before training camp and the second time in training camp, my agent was like, Will's not coming in unless he does a solo workout by himself because we're coming with the intention mm-hmm. to sign. We're not going to do the whole carousal where there's going to be several guys and then we all leave and then yeah. you decide who you want. So that third time the Saints called, um, they basically said, hey, we want to fly Will in. He's doing a workout by himself, intention to sign, all that stuff. I get this voicemail after. This is the same day that Barstool's flying into town. And so... I don't want to have to fly out and not meet with Barstool. Yeah. This is the morning time. And uh, I just 
don't return the call until like later that late afternoon when I know that no flights can go out anymore. <laughs> and then I was like, hey, because again, I'm trying to I'm trying to sit down with Barstool. Yeah. Gaz, Erica, they flew into town to meet with us. We it was an off day for Taylor. And then we went over and ate at True Foods over mm-hmm. in Green Hills. And uh, so later that afternoon, I called my agent and I'm like, hey, I'm sorry I didn't get your call. I was I've been working out. <laughs> like, fuck it, what you've been working out for six hours. <laughs> and uh, been working out, yada yada. I got your voicemail. Like, I'm down to fly out, ash crack at dawn tomorrow morning. We can do the workout even tomorrow if they want mm. me to. He's like, All right, perfect, we'll line it up. We go and meet with Barstool. We sit down with Barstool and they're like, Hey, what are you guys thinking? And we're like, We think we're just gonna ride this year out, this football season, but we'd love to continue the conversation. Because we had all these, they're like, well, what's your plan for football season? How are you guys going to podcast during football season? And we're like, oh, we've built up a library to where we can drop them all now. So that way, because backtrack a month prior, I got on the phone with Pat McAfee and kind of just reached out to him like, hey, on some mentor stuff. Mm-hmm. And I was like, man, I'm just seeking advice. Like, you know, I had my notebook out, just wanted to be a sponge. Like, you know, what do I need to know about this industry, about everything? He goes, you need to know that your audience, you need to think of your audience as your best friend and you got to show up for them every day on social media and you got to show up for them when you say you're going to show up for them. So what he meant by that was if you're dropping once a week, every Tuesday, then be there every Tuesday He's like, I know you got the anxiety of the football season and everything else. And he's like, but I'm telling you, like, if you want to keep your audience and you want to continue building your audience, you got to continue to show up week in and week out and mm-hmm. not have many lapses. It's like, I know that's hard to do because camp's coming, blah, blah, blah. From that conversation, got on the horn with Taylor. Taylor and I talked about it. And we're like, we need a fucking backlog episode to last through the season mm-hmm. now. And um, we did about 12 in one week. Jeez. It was a fucking... Line, <laughs> and you know you only have so much to talk about. Yeah. You only have so many jokes at that point in time. <laughs> you only watch some recent episode of fucking yeah. Family Guy or something where you just have some joke that you're writing mm-hmm. for the entire week. It's like playing a song on repeat <laughs> yeah. when it first comes out. And so when you're doing these three conversations a day and you're trying to like keep it up and everything else, but yeah, we did twelve in one week in fucking ninety degree heat in that fucking bus with no AC, mm-hmm. or we had a little bit of an AC unit, but uh, it was fucked. Um, so we did that, man, because we wanted to kind of take that approach to it. And then as far as intros, if we ever had sponsors or do an intro, I would just take my, uh, what are those things called where it's got the little mic on the end, it's got the little knobs on the side, that little like. Like a lab? Yeah. yeah. Like Not a small one. No, it's like the, it's like if we sat it right here in the middle and plugged all of our mics into it. Like Look. Like yeah, like a like recorder. Like a mic or- you could hold it. If, yeah, I like I would hold it up to my. Oh, the Zoom, I know what you're talking about. That's what it is, yeah. Yes, the Zoom recorder. Yes, the H4N, yes. And I would literally, and when I was on the Saints, when I was gone, because that I made the team, or I did my workout, um, did well, signed that day, and when I would go and travel, or wherever I'd be, I'd sit in my right hotel it. room. I would sit in the closet of the hotel room to minimize as much sound as possible and just do the intros and the recordings for any episode that came out. And so that's kind of how we approach the football season. And then the conversation continued with Barstool throughout the year, not a whole lot, because I got hurt with the Saints and uh, low low sprained ankle, something that only mm-hmm. kept me out four weeks. But again, they needed a, a base linebacker for weeks one and two. I get hurt. Alex Anzalone wasn't available. They needed Mike Backer. They end up trading for Kiko Alonso. They give me an injury settlement. I'm on the couch for about eight or nine weeks, and then that's when the Raiders called, and I went to the Raiders and kind of was riding the whole boys thing through the Raiders. Yeah. So then what, what, did, what did it take to get the Barstool, Barstool deal done, and what did that deal kind of look like for you guys? Because you, you always say in the pod that you own the podcast, right? You, yeah. always, you always say that. Yes. <laughs> Taylor's big on being like, we own the podcast. We, nobody's this is our, our podcast. Boss. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, that's, uh, that is true. Like, yeah. When we were getting on the phone and having conversations throughout the year with Dave, Dave Portnoy, we'd get on the mm-hmm. phone. So Dave was part of that. I was Dave was part of the negotiation. Of yeah. Yep. I would have my business advisor on to be me, my business advisor, uh, Erica, Dave, and Gaz. Mm-hmm. And um, he's like, look, well, we're not even going to try to ask for your IP because you guys have already established something. This isn't like where we found the caller daddy. This is before yeah. the whole caller daddy stuff yeah. blew up and all, all that whole Fall conversation apart, was yeah. going on. Yeah. yeah. 
Like this isn't like Caller Daddy where we found you guys, we're giving you guys a platform. You guys already have an established platform. Mm -hmm. We were doing about 15,000, 20,000 uh, downloads on audio without mm -hmm. going full uh, YouTube uh, video style because we weren't sure if we were going to do do highlights of the episode because again, it's not like oh, you weren't doing YouTube at this point. We started to, I forget what episode it was, but we started to, but we would always, um, we would always release it later than the audio Got it. because yeah. at the time you just didn't know. I want to say Joe Budden went to Patreon. The Patreon thing was, was popping off. People would talk about trying to figure out ways to do paywalls and everything else. And we didn't know what we were going to do, like what the future part of it was. Yeah. At first, we just wanted to have a, a kind podcast. Kind of monetize it and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. we're trying to figure yeah. out how to monetize it. Like, do we take our YouTube and put it behind something? Mm -hmm. or Because we're trying to build our audio audience first. Yeah. Because audio audience is still bigger, like still costs more at a CPM yeah. level than a YouTube audience because mm -hmm. YouTube is so volatile and so mm -hmm. fickle at times. Yeah. Um, so the goal is to build the audio audience first. So we would release the YouTube a day later. So that way if people wanted to listen, they would have mm -hmm. to listen to it on audio first, try to get them to subscribe, resubscribe, yeah. all the shit that we would say to do that. And so Dave was like, you guys have already established yourself, so we're not going to ask for your IP. But the way I want to approach this is if we sign you guys to a deal, we want like a longer term deal. He's like, I'm talking like a, like a three year deal. We can go split revenue. I want to mm -hmm. approach this like a sports team. Like if, if I want to sign you guys as a player, like if we put you guys in our million dollar machine um, for one year, you guys are going to sit there at the end of the year with all the leverage, mm -hmm. which I can respect. I mean, he's right about that. It's yeah. like, what do we want? We want to acquire more audience. We need a bigger audience. We need an audience that Barstool has. It's kind of, that's the route, the locker room talk, everything else. And they allow them to, they allow all their creators to authentically be themselves. That's yeah. the benefit you get with Barstool. Mm -hmm. There's always controversy in the Barstool world because you can love us, love spitting chiclets, love part of my take, love all these other pods and hate other stuff. Yeah. You can love BFF. You can love Mean Girls. You can love Dave Portnoy stuff. You mm -hmm. can hate everybody else. Like there's always shit going on because they allow their creators to do whatever yeah. they want to do. And so there's a lot of benefit to that. So we decided that we would accept a three-year deal, and we basically came to an agreement on like a split revenue deal across the board. And then, and that happened at the Super Bowl after the year concluded. Got everything happens at the Super Bowl. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Looking it back, down, right? it's a dumb move on, my part, on our part because every the Super Bowl's going on. Yeah, like, we yeah. thought it was so sick we we're going to be announced at the Super Bowl. And it's like, oh no, <laughs> yeah, no one cares. Yeah, <laughs> like a fart in the wind.